Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now, sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I have my awesome guest back with me again, Ibrahim. Man, how's it going? Hey, it's going great. Um, good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's this is gonna be another fun one, guys. And today we are doing the movie like we were supposed to be doing last time, the ritual. And uh, I watched it today for the first time. So my breakdown of as far as remembering the movie is not gonna be as well as Ibrahim's because I know he's seen it quite a few times more than I have. But I will say this. I'm going to jump right into it. Like the way the movie started, you got a group of guys, they're hanging out, they're at a bar. When they leave the, now I'm going to be skipping over some things. You can go into much detail as you want to, but mm-hmm. they leave the bar and go to the uh, the liquor store. What transpired in the liquor store when, the, you know, the robbery and when the one friend got killed with the machete, that threw me off. I was not expecting that. Mm. I, I would expect yeah. that, honestly from like a gangster movie. You know what I mean? More so a gangster movie, and this is not even trying to be funny, but a gangster movie with like a Latin gang. Mm. And this is definitely, obviously this wasn't that. Yeah. I seen that, I was just like, I was watching that, I was like, oh shit, I was like, I was not, I was Yeah. Not or not- like, imagine like a revenge movie, right? Like, uh, like Death, what was it, Death Wish or whatever? Like those kind of movies, like the movies where like the guy's f- friend or the guy's, you know, wife or, or kid gets killed and then he's just like i gotta get revenge on this guy yeah it's it's a very brutal it's very brutal and kind of you don't expect it you know it, it's a very strong opening for sure because it tells us a lot about the main character right like this guy i think it's luke is the main character and you know he he basically the thing too is like he basically kind of lets his friend get killed and he hides yes now before we get any further <laughs> I think you know what I'm going to ask you. And I'll answer the question right after you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What do you do in that situation? Because he's in the liquor store. He has the he has the one bottle of vodka in his hand. And he has it like he's going to do something. But he just yeah. throws. What do you do in that situation as... What's his name? Luke. I think Luke was his name. was the main character, yeah. Uh, what would I do? So, I think... It, you know, it's it's hard to know, really. I've never been in a situation like that. Um, the only thing that came to my mind, I think I was one time I was, I was like at a Toys R Us, like back in the day when those kind of existed, (laughs) like this was like, this is like 20 years ago. And I was just like looking at some video games and there was this guy next to me and he just like starts shoving stuff down his shirt. And I basically just didn't say anything. And then the guy ran out of the, I thought they were going to catch him to be honest, but he stole a bunch of stuff. And I was like, okay um that's not really the equivalent because that wasn't like a violent crime going on but i i thought i literally in that situation i thought the dude was gonna get caught so i didn't say anything um but yeah i don't, I don't know because this one's kind of interesting because he's it's like a 50 50 right it's like he could either hide or he could sort of attack them um yeah i i i think if i was in his situation 
I would have tried to like grab my friend and do something. Maybe that would have sucked me into the conflict. But yeah, that would be my, I would try to help my friend and get him to safety or something, or at least, you know, uh, help him. And if that turned into a fight, I guess I would have fought him. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you though, man. Cause it's from what I got from that, I know there was three guys, right? Only one of them had a weapon, it seemed. From what we've seen, only one of them had a weapon, which is a machete. Which, I mean, yes, you have your two friends out there, but I think I would have done the same thing as you. Somehow cause a commotion because there's a lot of fucking glass bottles in there. You smash them bottles, try to, th- I mean, it's harder, easier said than done. But it's like, go down, you know, help your friend out, whatever you can do. Throw some bottles at the people. That'll, that right there will distract them. If you can throw a bottle, just crack them. If it breaks or not, that could be a distraction. Breaking the bottles. And then the commotion with, from your friends outside should cause something. Because you had three friends outside. Yeah, three. Mm-hmm. Three friends outside and you two inside. And I know people, what you're thinking, yes, it's a movie. Movies have to movie. But we're talking, we're going to put ourselves in certain situations. And I just feel like with that, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's, it's, you, I feel like you have to kind of try to do something just because it's like you, I couldn't sit there and see one of my friends, anybody that I care about getting murdered. So it's like, I have to throw the bottle, put myself at risk and we're going to go, we're either going to fight back to back or we're going to go out together one or the other. But I do feel if he would have did something, he could have possibly prevented his friend from getting killed. Yeah. Possibly. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent, but possibly. Because again, I'm, I'm assuming that, the other two guys didn't have a weapon. That's one. And two, they didn't want to do it. Like, he was telling the other guy to do it. The one guy was telling the other guy to do it, and then it just happened. I feel like he took mm-hmm. the money from the other guy, which means only one person had a weapon, which was probably to scare the, the people in there. And, uh, yeah, I'm fighting. And then you go from that scene pretty much to them hiking, mm-hmm. which I guess because that's what the one friend wanted to do. He wanted to go on that hike. He wanted to go on that hike, yeah. And And the other thing we should say, too, is like the reason why the friend got killed is that he wouldn't give up his wedding ring. He wanted to keep his wedding ring. The guy was like, give me your wedding. He's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then they killed him over that. Like, it's it's just brutal on so many levels. Right. (laughs) I'll I'll say this, though, man. I will say this. Being a married man, I get where he's coming from because it's like. Imagine trying to go home to your wife, but she's like, where's your ring at? And you're like, I got robbed and someone stole it. That's not going to sound very believable. I mean, I'm not saying it's not because you're going home without your wallet, without anything. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? You just went out with the guys drinking and now yeah. your wallet's gone. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be like, and I'm, I'm not I'm not knocking him for it because I get where, I get 100 percent where he's coming from. But I do feel like I mean, going back to the friend, the friend has to jump in. But maybe in a situation like that where it's like, okay, it's my ring or my life, life, like really going to die. I might just have to do this and take that sacrifice. But I'll tell you, say now if you make that sacrifice and you take your ring off, say the people leave you alone, I'm going to go question my friend. Like, yo, what the fuck? Right. Like, what, dude? <laughs> dude, you just left me out here to die, right? Like, <laughs> straight up to die. <laughs> and then my, my next thing is like, I know it's not important that. I mean, besides the friend getting killed, that was the important part of that scene, and the mm-hmm. one friend not sticking up for him because you kind of see how type of person he was. In my mind, I'm like, okay, so how did these guys escape? Did they go out the front? Did they just run out the front? That's one. And then two, like, what happened? Where the police called? Like, I, I know it's not it's not important for this movie. It would be If it was, like, a cop movie or whatever, it would be very important. But for this, I'm just like, what happened with these guys? Because that's the last you see of them. Yes. And I was also thinking if this could be because you're this could this is just a quick thought because you're thinking of a revenge type of thing. If somehow he lured those people to that hike, maybe saying there's <laughs> some, not treasure, but some sort of like <laughs> something that's worth a lot of money and it's in this cabin. I can show you guys how to get there. That would have been a crazy twist. A that would have been a crazy movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> but just just because you threw the revenge thing out, I'm like. Yeah, if that's how they would could have made it a revenge type of movie, but like yeah. said, they go on that hike, mm-hmm. which mountain climbing pretty much, and <laughs> shit. This mo- see this movie like besides that scene, this movie took a not a long time to pick up. It was like a slow burn, then that scene, then kind of a slow burn, but not in a bad way because it was 
it was four friends, well, five friends first, and then four friends mm-hmm. kind of just bullshit. Four guy guy friends together are hilarious in any type of movie, any type of setting. I don't get yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get you kind of that's one thing I did like about this movie with the acting. It was it really had some really good acting, and the bond between the friends was good. Like they had you know talking shit about each other, all that stuff that guys do. And I like that. I really did like that about the movie. And like the shortcut, <laughs> which I'll let you speak in a second too about this. The shortcut in horror movies is always the worst fucking thing you can do. It's like, yeah. The worst shortcut. <laughs> And it's always through the woods. Like, yo, yep. <laughs> have to cut through the woods. Like, no, let's just keep go. Let's just go the way we came. Yeah. Famous last words. Let's just go through the woods. Because <laughs> it'll save on time, and it never saves on time. Like, that's no. about. like the guy said that if they took the one, the way they came would be fourteen hours. Mm-hmm. I said if they took through the woods, it would be half that time. They were there for a couple days. They were yes. <laughs> like three days in the woods (laughs) and the nights are really wild for them that's when it picks up that's when it yeah the the nights are wild um yeah i i think so so like we should this is it's sort of kind of important for like what ends up happening later on Mm -hmm. uh but they're in sweden so the guy who died robert he wanted to go to sweden because the hike's supposed to be really beautiful and the hike that they take to commemorate his life takes place six months later. And they then leave all these, they leave like a photo for him and they sort of do, they like pour one out for him. Mm -hmm. They all take a drink uh, once they reach a certain summit. Um, Really quick. Before mm -hmm. you go on, that's the blackest thing right there. (laughs) They literally pour one out for him. (laughs) They each took a sip of it. They just, poured it out if that would have been a 40 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it was a hella black thing to do <laughs> just, and i don't understand why like i mean i get it because your friend likes to drink this that and the third but i'm like there's that's just a waste of alcohol that shit is not yeah. cheap. pour some water out <laughs> right yeah pour out the water you drink the 40 <laughs> yeah but they were just like the one dude was just hanging it, holding it upside down. And then I believe they left a flask there. I think they left a picture of the flask mm-hmm. and something else. Yeah, they all kind of like left a token of the guy, yeah. pretty much, Robert. Um, yeah. And yeah, the, all that stuff was like, you know, again, this is like you were saying, they're they're doing the character building, creating the relationship, making us understand like what, what this whole trip is about for them. Um, and then basically we get into the trouble of the movie, right? So they take the shortcut. The guy, Dom, he hurts himself walking. So now he's... Hmm? No, real. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's actually before the shortcut. Because remember, they're, that's yeah. why they took it. It's because he... Yeah, yeah. Hurt his yeah. Head. Yeah, yeah. He, he hurts himself. And then they're, yeah, they're like, okay, we got to take the shortcut to, to save time because we can't be dragging him along. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, and then the first thing that we see, like the first bad omen, we see like a bear strung up on a tree, completely gutted. And they're just like, whoa, this is kind of weird. Because it's freshly gutted. It's not, you know, I mean, the, to find that in and of itself is pretty strange. Mm-hmm. But then to see like it just happened, it's like, okay, who or what is out here doing this to a freaking bear? You know, <laughs> it's not like a deer. It's not like a elk. It's not like some kind of... Not even though, but because you could say it's not like a deer or an elk, but it's like if it's a deer or an elk or any of those animals, who the hell is strong enough to hang it up like that and have yeah. it open? Because it was like, and the blood is still fresh. Like the blood is still dripping, like you're saying, it's still fresh. Me, I'm like, you know what? On second thought, guys, at 14 hours, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going back. Because <laughs> they were like, they were like, this is crazy. It's still fresh. Let's keep going. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was funny. Yeah, they just don't, you know, that's another typical horror thing, right? Where it's like, oh, this is really strange. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, and then later they find like these runic symbols on like the trees and stuff like carved in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, again, more bad signs, but they're just like, yeah, whatever. We'll we'll keep going. Um, and then the really cool part, right, is that they get to the cabin. And then they, and it's like raining or whatever, and it's at night, so they decide they're gonna stay in this cabin. Uh, and then this cabin is like super creepy, right? 
they one the one guy goes upstairs by himself and there's an effigy there's like this weird effigy of this guy like this um up in the the top room and he freaks out <laughs> it's like the stick man or something yeah. um he's like bro like i don't like this at all <laughs> and the, the funny thing was that was the brown guy that went up there yeah and had i don't know what his nationality was so i'm calling the brown guy people if you're offended by that i really don't care <laughs> yeah he's like pakistani or something like like he's they're all british they're all british oh, these okay. are all british actors but yeah he's probably so that probably would make him like a pakistani uh but yeah he goes up there. He's not feeling it, which he shouldn't be because we're going to get into that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but again, real quick with the horror stuff, it's breaking the rules because it's like you're in the woods. You're in the middle of nowhere. You see a cabin. You just walk right in. That's not what you're supposed to do in those situations. You're supposed to keep going. Or again, I mean, I understand it was raining out. It was dark out. So I get that, but I mean, again, that fourteen hours, yeah, bad after all, man. You would have got stuck in the rain. You could have built your tent up and shit for the night. Mm-hmm. Do seven, get up, do another seven, or just don't fucking hike at all. This, this, I know, right here. I mean, again, we're gonna get into this movie. I gotta get my jokes off, people. This movie right here is another reason why I don't hike because stuff like this happens. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw this video. Um, this video went viral maybe about a month ago of this guy, he was hiking and uh, this, this, um, uh, it was a mountain lion. Mm-hmm. It was a mother mountain lion. I don't know if you saw that. It just went after him for like, he recorded the whole thing. It was like four, four minutes of this thing, just like stalking him on a trail uh, because he went after its cubs or whatever. I think and close to it. They were protecting it. me. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm not <laughs> recording that. I'm going to get out of there as best if I'm in this stupid situation, because I wouldn't be. And I'm probably going to shit myself. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, that that's scary. Um, I've I've done like, so I, I used to work for uh, like Amazon doing deliveries. Mm-hmm. And you encounter dogs that kind of do something similar to that to you, where they just like, they'll accost you. And if you turn around, they'll attack you more. So you have to, you have to be facing them and back up, which is what the guy was doing. And that's because you can't like full sprint. Oh hell no! Back right. <laughs> so you're going slower, but you're looking at this thing in the eye, so it won't attack you. And it's really kind of off-putting. Um, yeah, and just like being attacked by a dog, which is a domesticated animal, which is not trying to hurt humans, is scary. A freaking mountain lion, which it, it could just try and kill you. It could just try to just kill you. Like I couldn't imagine that. So yeah, I I'm with you, man. I'm not trying to hike or anything like that. It's just it's it's there's too many weird things that can happen to you. There is. I'd rather deal with a person than a wild. I'd rather deal with a crazy person than a wild animal. I believe because a wild animal, <clears throat> we can't do shit against a wild animal without weapons. A person, stick him in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go dirty. You know? exactly what I'd be doing. Like, if I really felt threatened where somebody was trying to attack me and I knew I couldn't take him, say he's a big muscly dude, he's on whatever, kick him in the dick. It's going to hurt. And then I'm going to run. <laughs> yeah, and then they're probably just going to let you go. <laughs> yeah, so, like, kick him in the dick, maybe kick him a few times. And, and that, that's a dirty, dirty move, but if it's something where it's you or them, Square right in the balls a couple times. If you have to just bop, bop, double kick. <laughs> Take them out. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully I'm wearing my steel toe boots because that might pop something. And <laughs> you know, they're, they're, They would be in so much pain, which I don't know how we got into this conversation, but they'd be in so much pain, I feel like they'd forget who you are <laughs> and just be like, you know what? Yeah. I'm not even going to mess with this person anymore, whoever that was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, like like you were saying though, they get into this cabin, and then what'd you say that thing was called that was up in the attic? Or up in- yeah, an effigy. So it's like a, a a a representation of like a person or a human. Yeah, it was the effigy thing, and like you said, the guy was up there. He was kind of scared. Of, well, not kind of. He was terrified of it. <laughs> yes. And his friends come upstairs because they hear him screaming. They all see it. I remember the one guy says he's gonna. Um, I know one one of them mentions if I hear footsteps up here, I'm leaving. 
Yeah. The other guy says, I'm going downstairs to start the fire and all that. So, you know, mm-hmm. goes them downstairs, sitting by the fire, kind of chit chatting. They go to, they lay down, they go to sleep. And then this is really when the movie starts to pick up. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is when it starts to pick up. And this is when it really, like, I was trying to see it really quick, too, before again. And then I want you to take this part. I, so today I was working over. I told you I was going to be working a lot of overtime. And today I started at six. I worked from six to 12 this morning. Six this morning to 12 this afternoon. Started the movie around like one o'clock. And there was parts of the movie. It wasn't because I was bored. It's because I was tired. I was like dozing. So my wife would kick me. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> so I had to keep like switching positions. I'm sitting down on the couch. I had to keep switching positions and stuff. And around this part, I kind of doze. And then, but this is the part where it really, really starts to pick up. Like from here on out. It's like yes. nothing but I won't say nothing but action, but there's always something going on to where you want to keep your eyes open, you want to pay attention, mm-hmm. your eyes and ears open, and that's something I really loved about that. But um, yeah, man. So what do you want? What do you think about this from like from this point on? Yeah, it was really good. Uh, this, especially what they're establishing, what whatever it is, whatever is haunting them, the way that it comes at them, it's. It's pretty interesting. It's really interesting and unique, I thought. Um, because, yeah, at this point, Luke has pretty much a nightmare where he's back in the convenience store. Uh, he's sort of seeing things play out again. But it's uh, but again, it's like a nightmare. It's like a weird, almost like a Freddy Krueger kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Uh, and then he, like, sees himself outside of the, the cabin. And uh, he, like, looks down at his chest and there's, like something is either engraved in his chest or like he sees spikes go in his chest. Uh, And then he wakes up from the dream. And like this, this part was like so interesting because like all of them are having nightmares at the same time. Everyone in the cabin. Uh, One guy's in the corner writhing. Uh, Another guy was like crying. And then they go upstairs and they see the guy, Phil. He's, he's (laughs) literally bowing in front of the effigy. And then he wakes up. He's like, what the hell is going on? Real quick, though, like <clears throat> going back to that part, you had the one guy, like you said, screaming. He was calling Gail, Gail, Gail. Yeah. You don't know who Gail is until mm-hmm. later on in the movie. And the other guy pissed on himself. And then the guy upstairs that was effigy. Yeah, the effigy. Mm-hmm. That was like praying to the effigy was naked because you see yeah. his clothing on the steps. You, they, they don't show him naked. They just show like his back. And he's mm-hmm. like praying. Mm-hmm. And like I was like, this is so... And the guy, again, the guy they picked, which we're assuming is Pakistani, I'm just going to call him the brown gentleman, possibly Middle Eastern. But uh, he was the one that was up there, so it seems... I'm not going to say it seems fitting in a sense of like that, but you would pick the brown person for that type. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Come on, if that was me, they would choose me to be like, okay, Aaron, look. At this part, we're gonna need you to go up here, yeah, <laughs> and pray to this thing. <laughs> and for you, because your light skin, they're gonna be confused. Like, all right, so I don't know if you're Middle Eastern, Puerto Rican, or Black, but we're gonna need you to whatever language you speak. <laughs> yeah, say say something in another language <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> English guys. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. But now, like. That I and I, I do like how they did that though because it's it gives it kind of a realism to a sense of just with something like that whether it's like with uh what is it called just with spiritual type of spirituality type of stuff but not I don't mean necessarily to like a god or anything like to god or anything like that but I'm just saying it seems more believable when you do it with the Middle Eastern gentleman the brown gentleman instead of one of the British guys. So I did like that part about it too. It it gave it more of like a serious tone, because I feel like if it was one of the other guys, I'm not saying it wouldn't be a serious tone, but you might not take it as serious watching the movie. You, yeah, you might feel like that's kind of weird. It might weird you out, maybe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And it's it's interesting stuff because this is all like like we'll get into this, I guess, once we like talk about the full scope of like what what they walked into, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, there's they're already like telling us there's this weird pagan kind of stuff and like you know praying to a a wooden effigy is a very pagan kind of concept and yeah it's some really out there kind of stuff you know um yeah you don't see that a lot uh but 
uh, yeah, it's it's and it's like that's some ancient, ancient, ancient stuff too, religiously. Um, that's you know, so like there's not a lot of films that go into those type of sort of you know uh, cycle like those kind of kind of horrific things. So I thought that was cool. I agree with you there. I agree, and I like that whole scene was really, really powerful. And again, the guy yelling "Gale, Gale, Gale." <laughs> That was a lot more powerful and sh- scary and heartfelt than the other things. And I say that, well, besides the guy seeing his friend get killed again. Yeah. And I say that because when you find out who Gail is, which we will get into in a few minutes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you find out who that is, you're just like, holy shit. This yeah. is nuts. This is fucking nuts. It, it's real. It, it Whatever it is, and we don't know, but we kind of from this scene we get the sense that it attacks them at a like their most weak point it finds their weakness and then it grabs it and it uses that against them which is really powerful right <laughs> which uh, really quick the guy that pissed on himself you don't really see what, what was his weakness they, uh, what, what was his fear cuz again what yeah what, i forget or something that really touched him because we can go with again the one gentleman we are discussing with the whole ritual, you know, the praying. Mm-hmm. Stuff. Praying, yeah. I had, I'm sure that has something to do with his character personally. Gail, that has something to do with that gentleman personally, mm-hmm. and the one guy in the convenience store over and over and over. That obviously has something to do with him. But the other guy, I don't really remember them showing his dream. I remember them; they showed him. So what happened was when the one guy wakes up and he thinks he's in the convenience store, and he ends up he's outside. He goes back in because he hears his friend screaming. The one guy's screaming, he wakes him up, he has piss on himself. The other guy's screaming, he's calling for Gail. He's, like, in the corner calling for Gail. And, like, but you, you don't see what – you don't see mm-hmm. at what he's – who he's mm-hmm. calling. You just hear who he's calling. But the other guy, you just hear him yelling. You don't necessarily – you don't see what he's screaming about, what he's scared of, or what he's really attached to, which – now that I think about it, that kind of bothers me a little bit because it's, like, he was, like, the one guy that had it together – that was like the tough guy, the leader. He knew where the fuck he was doing. Mm-hmm. The guy, hey, let's take the shortcut. The guy who had the maps and everything mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kind of held the crew to kind of held everything together. And so I'm wondering what his dream was or what his vision was, so to speak. I know it's maybe it's not that important, but at the same time, I, even if it was something minuscule or small, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I just wish they would have showed that just because, again, they showed everyone else's and. Yes, everyone else has kind of mattered to us to an extent, but I feel like his should have been in that as well. Because when he gets, well, I'll wait till we get to that part. <laughs> I, I feel like it, he might have seen how he died. That might have been what it was. Okay, that's 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 what I think. But yeah, you're right. I I don't. All of the other ones, they it's some kind of personal thing, right? It's a personal fear that they have, <clears throat> or some personal moment mixed with their death and demise and seeing how they're going to have a demise. But with him, yeah, I, I don't remember exactly what the, the, the fear was for him. Yeah. I don't know at all. I don't know at all. But anyways, we get from that. Everybody's awake. Everybody gets dressed. Next day. <laughs> they get dressed. They're leaving. That's where arguing starts a little bit. When they get outside more, it's, um, yeah, I don't remember any other names. But the guy who fucked up his knee and the main <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> the dude with the glasses. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I couldn't remember if he had glasses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah gla- he did have glasses. <laughs> the nerd who yeah. fucked up his knee. Idiot. <laughs> so they start bickering. Like, he's pretty much just yeah. saying, pretty, pretty much he's like, yo, <clears throat> pussy, why the fuck didn't you help the toy out when he was in there? That's, I mean... They argued for a few minutes longer, but that's basically what he was saying. Yeah, that's basically what he was saying. Yep. And then the dude punched him in the face. Yeah. He's like, oh, you broke my nose. And, and again, the, the, the every guy, that the, every guy, the, the guy we, we think has it together was just like, your nose is not broken. Get up. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But I felt like he was like, somebody needs, he's like, no, somebody needs to say it. Yeah, because they were thinking it. And I kind of feel like that needed to be said, but this is not the time for it. Like, yo. We just had wild ass dream. Some wild ass shit just happened. Right. We don't know what the hell happened? We're not on. We're not on any type of psychic, you know, psychedelic or. Drug. Yeah. 
we can argue about this shit when we get home. When we get back to London, they're from London, right? Yeah, yeah. It seems like they're from like they're definitely from the UK, but I would I would pin them as London. But yeah, they're 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 from somewhere in the UK. <laughs> when we get back home, we could discuss this. But right now, let's try to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. But I do see why it happened. It kind of brings out the characters more because then the guy is like, "Cause the guy is like, how are you gonna just let your friend die? I would never do that." Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. We're not friends anymore. I'm not your friend. And I guess that scene was kind of important because, again, a little later on in the movie, we'll get to it. But um, yeah, we go from that to the guy with the glasses and the fucked up knee was pretty much like. They're they're walking, they're walking. He's like, you know what? Let's just take this path. Fuck this map. Let's just yeah. Path. This he said paths lead to civilization or something. The path. You know? Yeah. He did. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like, where do you think you are, dude? <laughs> where do you think this for? Like, you're not in the city. It's not like you're right outside the city. Like, oh shit, yo, we can just go down this side street. Yeah. Boom, we're back on the. You know how like you have like that main road and there's like. Yeah. 20 different side streets. You're like, hey, you hit this side street, you go around the corner, boom, you're back on the main road. And then you can find out everywhere. This isn't what it was. You're in the woods. <laughs> yeah, you're in the woods, dude. You're you're in the middle of nowhere. And you, they, yeah, like you have to know, you, they had one chance, right? Like the minute when they saw the, when they saw the, uh, the cabin, if they had just gone back and got back to where they were and taken the long way, that, that was their out. Yep. Now they're screwed. <laughs> Now, now, really quick, do you think, and I know this is throwing it off too much, if they would have stayed, in, say they did stay in the cabin that night, you know, got dry, which it was smart, they at least hung their clothes up, started the fire, dried their clothes off. So say they get dry, they relax, whatever. Everything happens that happened in the cabin. They leave the cabin. If they would have went back then, would they have survived or did stuff change? I'm sure stuff changed. Uh, you know, I feel like stuff changed, but what I think would have happened was that <clears throat> they would have been attacked. Uh, I think that's that's honestly what I think would have. They would have been attacked, and and maybe some people would have gotten out, but some people, probably multiple people, would have died anyway. Maybe one person would have made it. One more person would have made it, basically. Okay, okay, so pretty much the same outcome. <laughs> yeah, pretty much exactly. It's pretty much the same outcome. Yeah. Um, it's. I think I'm kind of with you on that, only because I feel. <clears throat> I think that whole time from, I'll say, maybe when they seen the bear, but definitely from the cabin on, they were being watched. We don't we don't have any evidence of that, but I feel like they were being mm-hmm. watched from that whole time. Yeah. Th- there is one scene, like, right after they leave where, um, yeah, I think, like, the, the dude who, the dude with the glasses is, like, kind of mad, and, and then Luke is like, okay, I'm just going to look try and so he basically luke goes up a hill to see their surroundings he gets to the top of this hill and it's just trees everywhere and he's like we're screwed we are screwed right because they don't know how to get back to where they were they're in the middle of nowhere they just had this freaky dream it's all bad and then he kind of continues on and then he's somewhere and he sees like this thing's hand around a tree and some eyes Right. And, and then the hand moves and then he's you know at this point he's like what right because like now now not only do you have these weird dreams but then there's some thing is out there watching them and he tells them what he saw basically and then they're all just kind of like dude this is bad you know <laughs> they're a little skeptical but they but they also know that what happened last night happened and so it all seems to be coming together and uh, you know, and also when they woke up from the cabin, there was a bunch of runes, new, freshly carved runes, like right outside of, on the trees outside of the cabin. Right. So all this eerie stuff is happening. All the supernatural stuff is happening. And it's just, you know, they know the jig is up, right? <laughs> Something bad's going on. Yeah, you're right. You're right, man. <clears throat> and again, that's like this movie from, like I said, from the cabin scene on, it kind of picks up. It, it's... It's not as slow of a burn, I'll say. It's not like all action packed, but it's it's not as slow of a burn in between from the cabin scene till the end of the movie. And we go from that to them running in the woods. This was after the fight. They ended up setting up camp again in the woods that night, and everybody's dreaming again. <laughs> yeah. And it's pretty yeah. much the same stuff. Like mm-hmm. 
Um, so you go out, you see, or you see the what the the main guy again. He's pulling now. Here, I thought he's being an asshole because I thought he was. <laughs> I was wrong though. He was pulling something out of his bag. I thought it was food, right? Which it could have been because they didn't really show what it was. But it was like a bag. And I thought he was trying to open it quietly because like he he picks up the bag and it like crinkles, and then you hear a noise and he's just like sitting there for a minute. And I'm like, okay, is he just trying to open up like a bag or whatever the fuck he's trying to eat and just not share it with anybody? Yeah. And then you hear screaming, and of course he opens his tent. He looks out. He sees the the being. I don't even know what the hell you call it. The creature, and he goes back into his cabin because you see the yeah. remember the creature goes like behind his or not the cabin mm-hmm. goes like behind his tent, mm-hmm. and then he hears screaming again. So he goes out. You see the uh, the brown guy outside, and he's like screaming and terrified. Then you look over and you see the one guy's tent destroyed. Yeah, and you hear the other guy screaming in his tent. So he opens up his tent. He's like, hey, they got a. Uh, the guy that I think it was Hutch. Hutch was yeah, his name. Yes, they got Hutch. Something they got Hutch. Mm-hmm. Hutch is gone. Or something that has Hutch. And the guy, you know, he comes out of his little dream yelling Gale again. He wakes up. Yeah. And then they go look for him. And just like the they find him finally, just like the bear, they see him kind of hung up. And like his side like ripped open or something. The part I didn't like about this. <clears throat> is I felt like they could have made that look better. It seemed kind of lazy. Mm-hmm. Like, not him being hung up in the tree. I thought that was good. But as far as, like, you've seen the bear, like, split open. You've seen the bear, you know what I mean? Like, dripping blood. Yeah, you kind of seen him dripping, but it wasn't as devastating as it was with the bear. And I felt like it should have been. So they see that. They freak out. They run. I don't know what the hell they do after that. Like, I for, what did they do after that? Did they run back to their tents? Or did they just try to leave? I, yeah, I think that they get they they, um, they there's the the creature kills another person. I think like shortly after this, he, he, I know the brown guy goes next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think it. I think the creature takes takes the other guy after this. Luke has another dream, um, and then they find another cabin. Okay. Yeah, because I was just saying, I know they find another cabin. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, didn't they see the cabin on their walk? Like, should we go in there? They're like, nope, just keep going. I think so, yeah. <laughs> they, like, learned their lesson. <laughs> but I know there was a part in the film, which wasn't too far from when they found Hutch. They see Hutch again, but he's on the ground. And they're like, somebody put him here. Or something put him here. Someone or something put him here. I can't remember. that. This is the part where I don't remember if there's three guys left or two guys left at that part. Because they're like, we should bury him. Like, no, we have to go get out of here and send help. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, we don't have time to bear Because I remember the, he said we have to bury him or something. He was grabbing sticks. He was grabbing a bunch of, like, sticks. And I don't know if he put them on the body or what. But you go from there to they find the little village in the forest, I guess you want to call it. I don't know what to, I don't know what to fucking call it. But they find that. And... Of course, they think that that's a great idea to just go there, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they go to this 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 weird pagan civilization out in these woods, and basically they get they get knocked out, uh, tied up, bound by these people, <clears throat> and yeah, they get taken in by it's pretty much a pagan cult in the middle of who knows where <laughs> in this country. Sweden. Yeah, Sweden, and. They they're worshiping this beast. They're worshiping this thing. <clears throat> and so at this point it's Dom and uh Luke are the only two left. <clears throat> and so then they come in and they they look at the two of them. And then they look at um they look at Luke and they see that he has this this marking on his chest. So they leave him alone. And so then Dom is the one they're gonna offer to the beast. <clears throat> I didn't pick that. I was wondering why yeah. it was Dom instead of Luke, and that's because I remember he. I remember the markings on his chest, but that makes plenty of sense. Yeah, he. So pretty much, Luke was chosen. So I think what happens is certain people are chosen to join the cult by the the creature. And I'm wondering if he was chosen because of his him not helping his friend earlier. They're like, you know what? You're someone who's not going to stand up. <laughs> You're right. No, seriously, like if you yeah. you're not gonna stand up to the beast or try to 
have people go up against this beast because there's a lot of people there. I'm like, all these people, all the people there could have probably killed the beast. They could have killed it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they had weapons too. Yeah, yes, they did. They had guns. They had axes. They had all kinds of shit. They just weren't used it. <laughs> yeah, but I feel yeah. like the beast was like in their mind and in their dreams, maybe see what they really cared about, see what they would fight for. And then he was like, let me grab this guy's chest and feel his heart or whatever. Okay, this guy, he's, he's, he's pussy. He's not going to do anything. Yep. Yep. He's someone, he's someone who will worship me and do what I want if I put the fear of death in him. There you go. There you go. He's going to he's gonna hide in the corner. He's going to cry. And it makes sense, though, because it's like, <clears throat> that's what, I mean, if you want to, you can call it a cult, the beast of the cult leader. That's what a cult leader would want is... A bunch yes, weak-minded or mm-hmm. quote-unquote weak-hearted people who are just gonna bow to whatever you say, believe whatever you say, kind of like Trump. <laughs> yeah, you want you want people that'll just do exactly what you what you tell them to do, and they won't question. And if and they're gonna and even if they do question, they have so much fear they're not gonna do anything. Yeah, they're gonna question in their head, like you know what, what, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, like nothing. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other thing that was interesting too, so like Dom, so like they, they do this, they do this, I guess you could call it a pre-ritual with Dom. Mm-hmm. They basically get him ready to have the, the beast come at night and kill him, but they don't do anything to him yet. And then Dom meets again with Luke and then he basically confesses like, yeah, I saw my, I saw my wife, Gail. That's what I've been seeing. And I, I think I'm going to die here. Yes. Which is pretty powerful stuff, right? Going from that, so now we know why he's mentioning Gail because it's his wife. When they do grab him to sacrifice him, you know, he's talking his shit, fuck, blah, 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 talking his shit. <laughs> and, well, he does, he does, before he goes, he does, he tells Luke, he's like, Luke, do whatever you can do to get away. Then he tells him to burn the place down and just leave. He's like, whatever you need to do to get away, get away and leave. I know I'm going to die here. Just get the fuck out yeah. of here. Which brings you back to the point where they said they weren't friends and all this other bullshit. I feel like that that's why that seems important because it's like that was just an argument you had with your boy. Whatever. I've never had an argument where I said we're not cool anymore. I've had, you know, you have discussions whatever with your boys, especially when you're younger. You know, fuck this, blah, 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 but it's never to that extent of that. But at the end of the day, when shit gets real, it's like, yo, I have your back. And I feel like it shows how strong Dom is compared to Luke. Like, listen, I know I'm not going to make it out of here. I know they're going to kill me. I'm going to be a sacrifice, but I want you to survive. I want you to live. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like, at, I mean, you could look at it as two things, right? You could look at it as being the friend. Like, listen, I'm standing up for you. You're my boy. They're going to take me anyway. You can also look at it as they're going to take me anyway, but this is the fuck you to you. This is just in a sense of like, this is what you should have done. You should have helped our friend. You should have sacrificed yourself to help our friend. But me sacrificing myself for you, even though we just had a little falling out, we were helping. I mean, yes, they made up their helping each other thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're going to feel bad because I, I put my life on the line for you and you wouldn't do that for our friend. So you're going to, you're going to, not only do you have to live with the fact that our one friend died with you sitting right in there watching it, you're going to live with the fact that I put my, I mean, yeah. I, even though he had no control over it, but I'm saying you do this and get away. I'll do, you know, I'll do what I have to do. You do what mm-hmm. you have to get away. Which, I mean, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. And powerful. Yeah, that was a really, that was a really strong part of the film. Because, like, at this point, we we haven't really seen the beast or whatever this creature is. We know what it does to people. But we, you know, we don't really know. We know the effect, right? But we don't know what's causing it. Mm-hmm. and you know he's you know we've seen what it like it rips people open and, and guts people out uh so that's that's crazy to face that type of death and again like we know that it it, it peers in and it finds people's worst fear and then exploits that to to kill them um so yeah like it, it's a really strong moment like he's like yeah i'm going to die I'm going to face this thing, but you got to survive. You have to destroy them, survive, and get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, I no, I agree with that. And then going back real quick with Dom's part, when he's at the stake, I guess you want to call it, when he's getting sacrificed, 
you hear the beast at first. You see, you see like the trees moving kind of like this, and then like the beast is coming in, but you don't see the beast. You see Gale, which is his wife, and that's all he sees. And they're like talking, and she's holding his face, and then it goes back. So what he's really saying, you see the beast is like holding his face, holding yeah. His and the beast, the eyes were like right here by like right here. The beast was big as shit though. It was huge. So then the beast carried <laughs> them off and its eyes glow, like its eyes glow. I will say this about the beast. The look of the beast, I wasn't that impressed by. It just seemed weird. It looked like a big moose. Yeah. And just, I kind of, here's two things I'll say. One, I wish if they would have showed the beast, if they would have just showed like the eyes, like how they showed the eyes and the hands on his face, and then that's it. And then it kind of goes away with him carrying it, but you don't really see it. I would have been fine with that. Or if they didn't show the beast at all. If they just showed the vision of what the beast makes you think you're seeing. It's like the vision of him thinking he's seeing his wife. Because like, and I understand, you know, with the whole rituals and stuff, a beast is supposed to look whatever, however the way the beast is supposed to look, but I just felt like they could have did it better with the look of the beast, even though most of the time you see in the beast, it's dark and like the even the outline of the beast stands up, it's all dark and stuff. I just did not like the look of the beast from what you see. Was, it was it was it was very CGI'd, right? Um, like the thing we saw was just like a giant CGI thing. I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, it was it's unfortunate that it kind of you know there wasn't a way to do this with a practical effect because I think conceptually like what this thing is it's very cool oh fuck yeah hell yeah it it really it really reminded me of something like out of like uh like like princess mononoke or something you know like one of these weird kind of animes um this we'll we'll get into like at the end like what this thing is based on in uh, sort of um i guess the norse mythology but yeah, I thought conceptually, I thought it was really cool. But it's yeah, it's just a giant CGI moose thing with this weird face with, with hands. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was kind of cool. It's like to get we do get a payoff in this. We get a payoff of what this thing is because there's been so much mystery. And before we kind of like that scene where the it comes at the tent and it takes the guy away, we do see it for a split second, but we don't really see it. And earlier we see just the hands moving behind a tree. Mm -hmm. So we do get the payoff, but you know, it would be nice if they could have put, if had more budget to like really create something that, that uh, could visually, I don't know, suffice for what the buildup was. I, I agree with you 1 million percent, but what I will say, even though I didn't like the, the look of the beast so much, the story I thought was excellent. The story was really good. The buildup was really good. Like the whole movie was good. The you know, things I like, I said, I didn't like the beast, and I did not like the way it ended. That bothered. The ending's me. interesting, yeah. The ending was just. I'm just like, what the? <laughs> Why? Like you yeah. had a good movie, and you end it like that. Why? 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The ending. The ending's interesting. Uh, I mean, I I I like that they. You know, because again, this is this film is really it's about like Luke and his transformation and his ability to sort of get over the fact that he didn't help his he didn't help his friend and he just could sort of just let him die. And this the whole thing is sort of like a way for him to, um, I don't know, sort of expunge himself of that sort of fear. Um, but yeah, because it's kind of hard because it's like you know. Could he have killed the thing? Could he have killed the beast? You know, was that another way that he could have gotten out of it? I'm not really sure. I'm not uh, even, maybe that would have been better, right? I'm not even mad the way he escaped. I'm mad at like the last 30 second yeah. movie. The way he escaped, like him getting out, that didn't bother me whatsoever. That's that's fine. That's cool. But I'm just like, you know what, fucking people, I'm just gonna tell you what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> You know he 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 escapes. He he gets out. He which I do like how he does fight because remember when he grabs the axe. We skip that part. He grabs a gun before he leaves the cabin. He shoots. He shoots one of the um, pagan people, mm -hmm. and he points his gun. Points the shotgun. I, think it was shot, I don't know my guns very well. 
But he points the gun at the other guy that's in there, the other pagan, and, the, and he had like a little axe, and he drops the axe. He picks up the axe. He keeps the axe with him. He shoots the beast once, I believe. Yeah. And then, um, you know, later on when they get in the woods, the part where the beast is about to kill him, or no, he, the beast has him, and then it drops him, and he, like, bows down to the beast, picks up the axe. Yeah, the it, it forces him to bow to it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Forces him to bow. <laughs> but he picks up the axe, he slices it, he gets a good chunk out of it, cut out of it, hurts it, and then he runs, which I think he should have just hacked it a couple times. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and then he runs, and he just runs and runs and runs, and he runs out the forest. The beast doesn't come out of the forest. Yeah. And once he gets out of the forest... He turns and looks in the forest and is just yelling back and pretty much back He's screaming. Forth, yeah. Screaming, ah, ah, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> and, and like, I mean, I get it for like, you know, a couple seconds. I get it. And then you go on with your, with whatever. Yeah. He does this. And then the credits roll. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> you get him at the very least, you know how like when these crazy things happen, you couldn't get him at the very least, like, Going back home, being back, sure, home, mm-hmm. being even if it showed like a minute of it, just him being back home, kind of just maybe going through the pictures that they took earlier, just kind of going through the pictures and just like kind of upset about it. You know, Meeting with the wife or something, Gail. If oh yeah, to tell her about it, mm-hmm. I would even say going through the pictures and then maybe this now this may have been I may be asking for too much, but this may have been cool. Kind of, it's when they're going through the pictures. If you've seen the eyes of the beast. When he's going through the pictures, <laughs> just the eyes because they're taking yeah. selfies. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's like behind them he sees the eyes. Yeah, that would be creepy. Yeah. That would have been, but just the way it ended was so disappointing. I'm like, it's very crazy. abrupt. And the for me, this is now when we get into the ratings, which is going to come very soon because I know you have another obligation. Um, what was I going to say? That's going to hurt the ratings for me because like. Story, I love the story. The story was good. The story was fun. And I'm more of like a slasher, but I'm starting to get into more of the kind of slow burns. But uh, story, I thought was really good. The acting, I thought was really good. And just like the bond and all that stuff, it's, it made you seem like it was realistic as far as the friendship bond and all that other stuff. But then when you get to the, the way of the beast, that hurt it for me. <laughs> and um, like I said, the way it ended, just the last was like 30 seconds to a minute the way it ended just with him when he got out of the woods yelling that's what bothered me and with that i'm ready to give some ratings i usually try to i just i think i told you from the last episode i try to do it like from a negative 10 to a positive 10 and have like a fun rating to it i cannot think what was that thing called again (laughs) like the the creature no no not did, did the creature have a name not officially no no one ever says all right, no, the thing that was in the cabin upstairs in the cabin. Oh, you mean the effigy? How many effigies would you give this movie? <laughs> How many effigies would I give this movie? A ten to a positive ten. Um, I think this is definitely a positive for me. I think it, it's like it's like six and a half effigies out of ten for me. It's funny you say that, man. Because I'm giving, I was thinking, I was thinking between a six and a seven. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? A six and a half, <laughs> fine with this movie. This movie would have easily, maybe not easily. This movie would have been a seven to a. Between a seven and an eight, probably a seven and a half, if it wasn't for Look of the Beast for me, and then the um, the way it ended, just like that really, yeah, me. it threw me off. And if they were just change that, even if they didn't say what I said, as far as like him going through the pictures, and they see the beast eyes, and he's talking to the wife or whatever, they didn't even have to do that. Just show him home, or just when he runs out of the woods, let it go off. That would have been better. <laughs> that would have been better than ah ah ah. I'm like, all right, man, come on. Now. Fucking go home before something gets you. I know, yeah. It's, <laughs> the ending is it's abrupt and it's a little it's a little cringy, a little weird. I didn't really mind that much because I did I did like the concept just of like this thing can't leave the forest. That's its domain. Mm-hmm. I did like that. But yeah, what he did after was was a little bit weird. It, it you know, it, it it's like I don't know, he's just trying to have a release, like, yeah, I lived, I survived, I made it, you know. Yeah. So that was like kind of the whole point. I mean, because I see, I think of different things. I mean, I, I'm a horror fan, as as are you, and I'm thinking sequels. And the reason why, I, the only reason I'm thinking this, I'm only gonna go. I'm not gonna go too too far into this, but because I'm thinking of like, say he goes back home, he tells people what happened, 
some people have heard about these woods before. That ends up making it a tourist attraction. People mm-hmm. in the <laughs> part two or whatever. People go there, which I mean, it would ruin it. But I'm just saying, like, or just, or if the movie ends where he leaves, he tells the story, right? And then you see others going in, or maybe through the whole movie, he's telling the story to somebody, but you don't know he's telling the story until the end of the movie. He's like telling you know everything that happened. You don't know he t- he's telling the story. Like I said, to the end of the oh, movie. Oh, sure, yeah. And then you, and then it shows the woods at the end of the movie, and you you see people going through the woods, like they're about to take the shortcut, basically, like another group. Either they're about to take the shortcut, or they're going in there because they want to go in there because of the whole ritual thing. They don't believe it, or they. Do it. Yeah, some people like they want to find Blair Witch, basically. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which. Funny you mentioned that movie because I have yet to see that. I am planning on watching okay. very, very soon. And I'm I'm mad at myself for not watching that. Like I'm thinking about it. Like that movie would have had so much more of an effect. On, if it scared me or not when it came out, I would have probably respected, loved, and appreciated that movie a lot more than I will now. Just because of the time frame that it came out. And like now it's gonna be different. I think I'll still like it. I do think I'll still enjoy it. I'm supposed to be doing a podcast on that Tuesday night, actually. But I just feel like me not watching it when it came out, it's kind of, you get a different effect. Totally. That was a movie of its time. Uh, it was groundbreaking. Uh, it was totally groundbreaking. And I, I like, I have no idea why I never watched it. I have no idea. You know how like there's certain things you just don't watch or you don't listen to, and it's like, fuck it, I don't like this. <laughs> like I'm not listening to it for whatever reason. You have your, I have no clue to why I didn't watch it. Like why it just drew zero interest. And now I wish it did back then, but I'm going to be watching it probably, what's today, Saturday? Probably Monday or Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, probably Tuesday, actually, because I had a show for it. Mm-hmm. But um, like I said, although overall, I did enjoy this movie, man. We're definitely going to do this again. I also want to get you on my other podcast, Popcorn and Pints. And like I was telling you earlier in the show, next Saturday night, 9 o'clock my time, which will be 6 your time. I don't know if you're free or not, but we're doing um Batman from 89. And it's going to be live, so we're going to all goes well. We're going to be going live through our Facebook group on the Z Network, and then our I made a Twitch for our Z Network channel as well, a Twitch channel for Z Network. So on on that, and then on Twitch, and then once it's all said and done, I'm going to download the episode and upload it onto YouTube. So, yeah, I love Batman '89. That's a really great movie. I loved Batman as a kid, and that was like the first Batman movie I ever saw. So. <laughs> here, man. Same here. And that's. I'm gonna end this real quick, and then I'll talk to you for a couple minutes. Again, I know you got to get going soon, but uh, go ahead and plug your stuff, man. Plug your show. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Thanks. So, um, you can find my podcast and all my YouTube channels. So, uh, just look up Deep Focus Cinema Podcast, and you can find uh all the stuff I do there. See, so, yeah, I talk about. So again, like the last month, I've been uh, doing some podcasts. Uh, on a lot of horror films. So we did Pan's Labyrinth that we did Bram Stoker's Dracula. We talked about Possessor. Um, so yeah, I've been, I, I did some, some horror films. Uh, I do sci-fi films. So I have a one coming up next Saturday. We're going to talk about Interstellar. So that'll be exciting and coming out tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to start. I just completed a new list uh, of my top 100 films and me and my co-host Lucian we're gonna we're gonna both go over our top 100 films this will just be like part one it'll be like we'll, we're gonna do like basically 10 parts in 10 film increments so you get to see the first part tomorrow that's awesome man. now do you guys record live or do you pre-record we do record live awesome awesome mm-hmm. but yeah guys go check him out awesome awesome guest awesome guy I know he did I know he knows his shit <laughs> so it's fun. And in case anybody was wondering, because I asked him earlier, he's black. Yes, I am black, totally black. A lot of people think, oh, is he mixed or is he, you know, I don't know. I've 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 heard everything, right? Like I was, oh, are you Middle Eastern? Are you Moroccan? Are you Jordanian? It's like, ah, oh, I'm just a black guy. <laughs> See, now, so it's funny you say that because I, would, if people are asking me, I'm like, yep. Like, it's, it's, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but the problem too is like, then people will come up to me and they'll like speak Arabic or something, and I'm like, I don't speak Arabic. Sorry. It's like, oh, you, so you understand it, but you don't speak it. It's like, no, I'm, I'm an American. I'm, 
I don't understand it. I don't speak it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't taught it. Sorry. I wasn't taught it. I don't speak it. I'm sorry. I wish I did. I'd love to be able to communicate you with you in your language, but I can't. No, I'm not. I'm not Moroccan or whatever you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let people know he's, he's black people. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe yeah. I'll start pointing out people's races as the shows go on, which I usually have some jokes about them anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, definitely go check him out. And then as far as my listeners and all that stuff, go check him out. And then as far as where I'm at, find me Facebook group, Facebook page, Horror with Thirst 30. And the group, feel free to share anything and everything horror related. Anything and everything horror related in the Facebook Horror with Thirst 30 group. The Facebook page is more so for you guys. That's where I post all my YouTube videos and all that good stuff. Anything to do with horror research studies gonna be posted on there. It's easy for you to find things like when I'm updating stuff, new. Which I mean, there's no cons for a while. So, but again, yeah. I'm do all my updates and everything horror research study. I post it in there. I do post it in the group as well. As far as not my podcast anymore, but as far as like random videos I do, I post that in both. But I might move that to the page as well. I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Um, also, the Z Network, which I'm still working on and building with me and my awesome friends and team behind next to me, not behind me, but next to me. The Z Network, you can see, you'll see Horror Research Story on the Z Network. You will not hear the audio of Horror Research Story on the Z Network podcast, though. You will hear that. The only thing on the Z Network podcast audio will be Z Network podcast exclusives, like um, the Statesman series and Popcorn and Pints. Those two shows, Popcorn and Pints, is another movie slash show review. So, it's going to be fun. Like I said, next weekend we're doing that. Well, by the time this comes out, because this isn't going to be out by next weekend. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, we're, gonna, we're doing Batman next weekend, and we're going to be doing it live. And um, we we did a Nicolas Cage thingy, which I'm not happy about. I'm not proud of, but I had to do it. <laughs> and with that one, like I said, it's going to be all, it's going to be non-horror movies and non-horror shows. So pretty much the opposite of my podcast. There's going to be swearing and all that good stuff, just like this show. It's going to be fun. Um, there's a bunch of other horror shows on the network. There's, there's the Z network has just has a bunch of stuff right now. You can follow us on Facebook. There's a Facebook group called the Z network. There's a Facebook page called the Z alpha network. So you can go give that a like, give the group a join. And we have a YouTube channel called the Z network as well. So go give that, go check that out. And there's going to be some fun content on there from again, there's horror and other types of content on there, different variations of content, funny content, great content, which is going to keep you guys enthused and just going. So definitely check out the Z Network. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmares. All right, let me just find that stop button.